Hey everyone, it's Julie Young for Korean American Story and Not Your Average. We are in somewhere in Tribeca today and I am with David Yi of Very Good Light. So tell me the mission behind Very Good Light, How, what inspired you, why now? Yeah, so Very Good Light is a Gen Z and young millennial based uh, publication. It's, it's about grooming and men's beauty, but we see these two subjects as the funnel to redefine masculinity and also to redefine men's beauty standards. I felt like there were no publications that empowered young men who felt like they weren't hyper masculine or they weren't, you know, super macho and they weren't part of the GQ or Esquire crowd. And I knew that men's makeup and men's beauty was going to be huge in 2017. And men's beauty was always a big thing for me because, you know, growing up in a Korean household, it was all about skincare. And so that led me to Very Good Light. And, you know, Very Good Light, it's, it means many different things to many people. But to me, we're all looking for that Very Good Light for our selfies. And that swipe left filter on Snapchat, for those of you who still use Snapchat, <laughs> makes your skin look dewy. But what if we didn't need Snapchat? What if we didn't need, you know, the elements for us to get that very good light because we had that confidence from within and that we loved ourselves so much that wherever we go and whoever takes the photo will always take a good photo because, you know, we're always confident and we love ourselves that much. One of the reasons why I love your work is besides the fact that you're such a good writer, you're so funny and entertaining and you're just on point with what you're covering, you're not afraid to be political. Both, you know, in your Twitter, you know, fine, but also like for Mashable, you had an article, I think, about a small Black Lives Matter protest during Fashion Week. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, who else is doing that, you know? I mean, I remember the, that morning, my friend Rachel Johnson, who was the first ever NBA stylist, so she does LeBron and uh, NFL's like Victor Cruz, she texted me, she was like, hey, I'm doing this Black Lives Matter march and protest for Fashion Week and we can really make a difference. Do you want to come join? And I was like, yes, and I want to write about it. For me, you know, fashion wasn't always about clothing and fashion is never just about how you look fashion to me is transformative and fashion to me is political and it's always been political and um, I'm glad that I was able to tell those important stories because you know yes we can see fashion as being a frivolous profession or a pr frivolous industry but at the same time, we can also see fashion as being something beautiful and something that can really open people's minds and perspectives. And it was always just so important for me to do the right thing and be on the right side of history. And to march with my brothers and sisters of Black Lives Matter movement was such a powerful moment. And I think that we really did um, make a statement that everyone heard. And it was just really empowering to watch and to experience and to hear their stories. So what story that you've done has been the most touching to you, most inspiring most? Was it the transgender teen story? Yes, I think it's the transgender teen story, but also I wrote a story at Mashable about black men dressing up in America to feel like they, they're protecting themselves. If they're more dapper, mm -hmm. if they wear Gucci and Ferragamo, maybe the police won't target them as mm -hmm. much. So fashion to them was armor. And um, I think that was really impactful. I wanted to do something for us, our people. So I wrote a story about Asian Americans in Hollywood really making a difference. Mm -hmm. So it was like Constance Wu and Margaret Cho and Ken Jeong and Aquafina. We did an original styled photo shoot and video and a story just celebrating their lives and who they were and you know the struggles they face, but how they are breaking that bamboo ceiling. Uh, but I really think that anything to do with, you know, outliers of culture and uh, people who need stories to be told, um, that's what I really want to do. And I want to continue doing these big, bold stories and go where no one else is going and, you know, um, do this uh, full time and, and be able to survive the next year or so, or longer, hopefully. Oh, you're going to do it. <laughs> I can tell you're going to do it. Okay, um, last question, two, last, my last two questions. Yeah. What is something that nobody knows about you? Wow, what is something that no one knows about me? I'm really, really disgustingly lazy on my time off. Like, so disgusting. Um, like this past weekend after Fashion Week, I just sat on my little sofa. I was Netflix. eating disgusting food <laughs> all by myself, balancing like my Coke on my belly. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I'll just like, okay, no one's watching me. I'm just going to be my ratchet <laughs> self. What's something that everyone knows? What everyone knows about me. First of all, does everyone know who I am? I mean, who's everyone? <laughs> my parents? Um, I think everyone knows that I'm passionate. And if I am going to do something, I'm going to go all in. I am the worst poker player because of that. I'm like, I'm just going to go all in and I lose everything. <laughs> but that's just how my career has always been. If I don't believe in something, I'm not going to go, you know, do it. Mm -hmm. If I really want something, I feel like I'll always get it um, because I'm tenacious and because I'm persistent, but more so because I'm passionate. That's amazing. And of course, we all know that you take the best selfies. <laughs> Do I? Everybody knows that. Because I only have one angle. <laughs> I only have one angle, y'all. All right, you're going to tell me a secret when we're done. But David, thank you so much. This thank you. So great. And uh, thanks, guys. <laughs>